Famous engineer producer Glenn John says George Harrison and Mick Jagger were not too crazy about Led Zeppelin 1 as it celebrates its 50th anniversary. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. The website Alternative Nation were reporting on this yesterday, as well as Ultimate Guitar, who actually transcribed this interview with Glenn Johns. And you can post this one under, well, you either like something or you don't. And by the way, when, when Zeppelin 1 came out, I was only nine years old and I was not really in that pocket yet. And it probably took me 20 years to appreciate that album. For whatever reason, it was one of the last Zeppelin albums that I ever really liked. I love it now, which is weird because it's considered to be one of the greatest debut albums of all time. One of the biggest figures in rock behind the scenes, Glenn Johns, was interviewed by Sirius XM. And he said after playing the debuts of both George Harrison and Mick Jagger, neither one either liked it or got it. No matter how good an album is, there are gonna be people who just don't like it. It happens all the time. The famous producer engineer said, I was working with the Stones around the same time this record, Led Zeppelin, was made. We were putting together 1968's The Rolling Stones Rock and Roll Circus which was a TV show which had a lot of different artists on it. Just after finishing this record, Led Zeppelin, I was going to the production meeting for the Rolling Stones Rock and Roll Circus. We were all kicking around ideas on who should be on it, and I took this record and played it in the production meeting. But Mick didn't get one side of it, probably still doesn't. I was also working with the Beatles, and on my way home from the Beatles session, George Harrison and I lived in the same direction and went past Olympic Studios in London, which is where I made the Zeppelin record. I said to him as we left Apple, you should come follow me to Olympic so I can play you something. I got the master out and I went into the studio and I played a bit of the record for him. He didn't get one side of it either. He thought it was awful. But as I said a while ago, there's always gonna be great albums that you don't get right away or else maybe your taste is not matured enough. I mean, we are talking about George Harrison and Mick Jagger two of the biggest figures in rock and roll history, but it doesn't mean they're gonna like the album. Did you like Zeppelin 1 or were you even around old enough at Zeppelin 1? Like I said, I was nine years old. I wasn't really buying records at that time. If anything, I was into bubblegum at that point and Zeppelin was anything but. They were a rock blues band, especially bluesy, especially bluesy on that first album. But as my taste matured, I'm not talking about Mick Jagger or George Harrison, but personally, as my taste matured, I ended up really liking the album. And when it was re-released on vinyl, I bought it. One of the first drum covers my son ever put on YouTube was Communication Breakdown from that album. So it became a favorite around here, but I have to admit, I'm still not a huge fan of Houses of the Holy. I like it. And I always thought Presence had a weird engineering sound to it. There was not enough bottom end or something, but I like the songs. To me, it was 2-4 Physical Graffiti and In Through the Outdoor. That's where my wheelhouse was with Zeppelin. But you're never going to like everything. I'm a huge Elton John fan. There's a lot of his albums that I don't love. And the good thing about George Harrison and Mick Jagger, who obviously were comfortable in their skin with their opinions on music at the time, being such big figures in music, they could honestly look at Glenn Johns and say, I don't like it, and I'm not apologizing for it. I'm just kind of curious, though. I like asking you questions. How old were you, and what was your impression of, of Zeppelin 1 when it came out? I'm sure you loved it. I was just an odd bird out. I was too young. And remember, make sure you subscribe to our channel. It's very important. We're in the process of building other channels because I'm interviewing a lot of um, uh, older demographic artists. I'm a big fan of music pre-rock and roll. I'm always be a rocker first. But I'm starting to interview a lot of people who were behind the scenes, a lot of folks who were part of rock and roll before rock and roll came out. We're losing a lot of these people, so I'm sort of in a hurry to interview them. So we've got other channels for that. Nail Sheet does a lot of that kind of stuff. There'll be links in the description of this video. If you're a Canadian music fan, we've got Rock History Canada and our Top 10s channel where we do a lot of Top 10s. We didn't want to do this on this channel. This is new music news, is Rock History Book. I'm John Bowden. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel and share our videos. This is Rock History Music. Mm -hmm.